Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to give a little update today on what's going on <clears throat> with the car. Been trying to get some stuff done. And uh, not big stuff, but stuff still needs to be done off. Checked off the list. So um, I'll flip the camera around and show you what's been done. So the fuel system is plumbed. Uh, I just ran it up and uh, mounted the fuel pressure regulator to the uh, motor plate and I found this old Hearst line lock uh, roll control or whatever in the box of parts that came with the car and I checked the solenoid and it's still working. I don't know how good but we'll find out. And um, I got a pulley set that I'm going to have to make a crank pulley shim for um, because the motor plate pushes it out. So need to make a shim for that lower pulley. Um, and the front brakes. We went through the front brakes, new bearings, seals, pads, calipers. Had the rotors turned, uh, new hoses, everything new in the front except for the rotors. I can get one more. I can get one more use out of them, or until we decide to swap them out with a, a racing style brake kit to shed some weight off the front of the car, and see if it makes it go faster. Uh, Got the glove box door mounted. Obviously there's nothing in there, but the door's mounted anyway uh, com to complete the dash. Took forever for me to find the uh, little metal catch for the latch for that. And I just put the, uh, the battery disconnect in the car with the push-pull handle. Uh, and there's the, the fuel cell and the, the bar I made to mount it to hold it up there and to protect the uh, protect the fuel cell in the case that it gets in an accident hit from behind because it's got fiberglass bumper and it's not going to stop nothing so uh, it's just going to be the sheet metal doing the work um, so I added that bar and fuel filter and the pump is up there but I ran dash 8 line all the way up to the regulator for uh, E85 the extra extra fuel needed for the E85 but it's ran braided line all the way from the cell up to the front of the car. No wonky uh, hard line or going from hard line to flex line. It's all braided. It's all braided hose all the way back. Um, I also got a proportioning valve, adjustable proportioning valve to uh, put on the car with uh, four-wheel disc brakes. It's going to need some adjustability and the stock proportioning valve is probably not going to do it. So I bought an adjustable one. Um, decided the mechanical fuel injection, I'm not going to run it. I ordered a ATM 
850 CFM um, E85 carburetor. I asked them to suggest what they thought would be best for the cubic inch size of this motor and the RPM horsepower, all of that. And they suggested in the 850 uh, CFM. And so that's what we're gonna go with. And it should be more than enough to do what we wanna do. Um, if not, I guess we can always go bigger but as of right now that's what we're uh that's what we're gonna we're gonna run 4150 so we can do away with the two inch spacer the adapter to go from 4150 to a 4500 dominator base so uh I talked to Mr. Vickers, Dion, at Vickers Performance about the transmission last week, and he said it would either be the end of this week or the end of or next week, and then we'll have to uh, ride up there to get it. It's a little over three hours up there, so it'll be a whole an all day thing to get up there, get it, shoot the shit for a few minutes stop and get food and then drive home so um, but that's the plan and bird shit on the car birds are everywhere um, oh the uh, the aluminum drive shaft it's a three and a half inch uh, aluminum drive shaft with 1350 yokes or joints, uh, solid joints and a Ford Spicer yoke um, made by Driveline One in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I dropped that yoke off on a Friday at noon and they called me Monday at 9.30 in the morning and said the shaft was done, ready to be picked up. And I wasn't ready to pick it up yet. Um, I didn't expect it to be that fast, but that's pretty fast turnaround on, on a drive shaft. So if you need a drive shaft made, um, hit up Driveline 1 in Columbus, Ohio on Frank Road. I will put the uh, address the information in the comments section of this video um, if anybody's interested in having a, a drive shaft made and I believe it has a, a year warranty on the tube and the welds it's either a year or two years I, I don't remember right offhand um, but yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice piece, and it's fairly light. The theme of the car is try to keep it as light as possible. Obviously, um, cheapo buckets, lightweight seats, aluminum seat mounts, no back seat. Um, just trying to keep it light, and uh, so. Uh, but I didn't want to do the front brakes. I didn't want to buy an aftermarket kit at first And then when I started looking at it um, They're not even available till like June or something and I don't want to wait that long so I just rebuilt the front brakes the factory style disc brakes and uh, We'll run those for a little bit and then when I get a a Willwood or a Strange or Aerospace front brake kit, then I will swap out the factory stuff, the heavy factory stuff with something lighter. And then we'll be able to see if there's a performance advantage between the two as far as the weight's concerned and suspension being able to travel and all of those things. 
Uh, I also changed this water pump to the newer style. Um, it had the iron early style on it before that one. But it blocked the uh, timing marks on the balancer. So unfortunately the radiator um, the lower radiator uh, neck is on the driver's side so you're going to have to make a, a hose that comes across the front down here at the bottom of the K-member and then turns and comes into the radiator which isn't a big deal it's just just a thing that needs to be done uh, to use that four core radiator after I uh, changed my mind about or saw that the timing marks were on the wrong side where the lower radiator hose feeding the water pump was blocking the timing marks and you can't have that so yeah so um, we'll figure that out and the uh, new I ordered a rebuild kit for the uh, steering coupler, rag joint, whatever you want to call it, that goes on the end of the Mopar steering column to attach to this adapter piece. I uh, ordered that yesterday, so it may be here. Uh, it may be here next week, hopefully, and then I can uh, put that on the end of the column and put the column back in the car. Uh, also, I bought a used uh, PTC converter. It's a 4,000 stall converter uh, from an old guy off Facebook Marketplace. Again, I was going to have a custom converter made for the car application specific, but um, lead time on parts is crazy right now especially for Chrysler stuff if it was a turbo 400 or a power glide or whatever you could probably find one in stock but um, not so much the case with Chrysler stuff so I was able to pick this one up it looks to have very little use on it uh, he had it in a much heavier car with a, a um, 383 in it I think drag car and a 3,000 plus pound Roadrunner and um, he said that it would stall out to about 4,000 RPM um, with a built 383 in it so uh, a little 377 may not be able to get it to 4,000 but it should get it to pretty close especially on a trans brake, so not foot braking it. Uh, it may be a couple hundred RPM shy of that foot trying to foot brake it, but we're not gonna do that really, except maybe on the street foot brake it. Um, just depends on how well the car works. So, but that's a little update for now, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more uh, progress and some parts coming in in the next couple days and we'll be able to make some headway and hopefully within the next two weeks we will hear this thing run for the first time and there will definitely be a video of the first start so looking forward to that thank you everybody for watching please like share subscribe if you haven't already turn on your notifications and uh, so you'll see the next video when it comes out. I appreciate everybody watching. We will see you next time.